Okay, you guys, it's time for that q and I promised. This is a world This is a world premiere. This is a world To celebrate reaching 2,000 subscribers, thank you all so much for subscribing. I'm gonna do a little Q&A here, and so I got some questions, and I'm gonna try to answer them. Kaori Flora asks, can you tell us what is inspiring or motivating you in your current work? That definitely has to be the fact that there are so many engaged people in the country right now. I think this is an organizer's dream to have people who are really engaged, people who really wanna see transformation, all willing to kinda get out of their comfort zones and go out in the world and do something. What are your desert island choices? Music, book, and luxury item. I think like a Swiss army knife. If I had like a tool to make things with, I could probably keep myself entertained for a really long time. Mexi, question. Um, could you please give me concrete proof that racism and patriarchy exist? Where's the proof? Just kidding. Real questions. Have there been any big turning points in your life, times where you either hit a fork in the road or just compelled you to go in a totally different direction? The decision to buy a house in Detroit. Um, there, in fact, I'm still in fights with some people about having done it. I think that was probably one of the biggest things that I decided to do. Um, probably the biggest thing that I decided to do in my life other than like going to graduate school or like moving to New York. Is there anything you wish you had done in your life that you haven't? And if yes, why not now? I'm a pretty, you know, driv driven person. Um, when I get an idea, I have trouble letting go of it until I've either worked it out or reasoned myself out of it completely. So if there's something that I've wanted to do or had a strong desire to do, um, I've probably done it at this point or just realized that it's just so unpractical that I probably shouldn't do it. Maybe you're hoping for a turnaround in 2020. Do you think the SJWs will prevail against the Milos of the world? I don't even really think the Milos of the world are even really having that great a, an impact. They're just kind of a smoke screen for the nothingness that goes on behind that type of thinking. I think the SJWs who are actually out there in the street and really working to get things done and really meeting people and having an influence to make change happen are definitely in the long run gonna have a greater impact than the people who just kind of sit around and say shocking things. I don't know. Veganism unspun. <laughs> <laughs> what is what is the meaning of life your take on it live man just live my my belief in how life should be lived is to promote life in as many ways that we can and to uh, which is the opposite of promoting death right to promote life in as many ways as we can Sandalwoods5 asks, some people think preferences are oppressive, like not wanting to date, let's say, an overweight person or a person of color. I don't know that I would want to say it's oppressive. It's probably a sign that the person is, you know, harboring some prejudices, but you know, that's that person harboring those prejudices. As long as they don't act in an oppressive way towards others, I wouldn't necessarily see it as oppressive. There is a chance that the fact that that person is harboring those particular prejudices, if they're in a situation where they have the power to make a decision based on those prejudices, it could end up being oppressive. But, you know, the person having those, you know, I just think it makes them, you know, not the kind of person that I want to know so much. <laughs> Kearney Vegan, would you like to set up an alt space garden in the spring? Yes. Call me. Emily de Castrique, are you familiar with the idea that it's important to name the oppressor? And if so, do you have any thoughts? More important than actually naming the oppressor by name is to really look at the system of oppression because honestly, the identity of the oppressor can change from moment to moment, right? It's the person who happens to be pulling the levers. I think what's more important than naming any individual as an oppressor is to look at the oppressive systems and figure out how to dismantle them and to make it less possible for that form of oppression to exist. Nata Smith, I guess this is, Nata SMTH asks, is the teenage boy you run with your son? No, that's Ethan, that's Ethan. Ethan was the subject of the convertible series and Ethan is also my assistant. He works with me here at Altspace and he's also helping me in the planning of the 2017 Pedagogy and Theater of the Oppressed Conference. And you guys are gonna be getting more information on that in a future video. I, I think I sometimes act like I'm Ethan's parent, but I'm not his parent. Could you describe your journey of approaching life and your ideological evolution? You know, I started out pretty much as a theater person. I've always been creative. I've been trying to direct plays since I was six years old and wrote my first play when I was 
eight years old and have basically been following a creative path for a very long time. It was very late in life that I was introduced to the concept of social justice, although I believe that I've always had a strong sense of social justice. And when it entered my life, I want to say formally, was when I started practicing Theater of the Oppressed, which was about 10 years ago. So I've really been active in the way that I am active now for the last 10 years. Do you believe in God and or the supernatural, and do you have a personal ex any personal experience to share? I don't believe in God. I believe that we are responsible for the moral lives that we live, and I think that we are, you know, we have responsibilities to each other. We have care for this planet. I don't think that there's anyone else who's going to come in and intervene if we make mistakes. It really is all up to us. I'm not really a spiritual person, but I think that I believe in the potential of human beings to a level that some would say was spiritual. I wage love. What is your favorite movie, TV show, book? Will you be answering all of my questions? You know, I can't. I can't even go there because so many books have affected my life. I probably, probably the most, you know, life-changing thing that I that I read was Paulo Freire's Pedagogy of the Oppressed. It was when I really started to understand what my relationship to systems of oppression were about. And finally, I was able to step out of them and start to, you know, analyze them and start to be able to think about ways that I could change them. So that's probably the book that's had the greatest impact on my life, but as far as things that I've read that I've just found amazing, there are just too many of them and I wouldn't, I, there's no way that I could narrow them down. Tom Hall, not really a question, but could you talk a bit about the time you spent in Denver and how you ended up in Detroit? That's two really long stories, Tom. I'll give you the short version now. The time I spent in Denver, I was working at a place called the Denver Center for the Performing Arts uh, and they have an amazing professional theater company there and I spent a couple of seasons, maybe three seasons with them and working with an amazing director, Israel Hicks, who is the late his Israel Hicks. The time that I spent in Denver really kind of centered around that relationship with that particular director. What got me to Detroit? The short story is Grace Lee Boggs. I heard Grace Lee Boggs speak and the way she talked about Detroit just got me so excited that I wanted to find out as much about it as possible and I knew that the only way to really learn about it was to be here. So that's how I got to Detroit. Mad Blender, who are your favorite? favorite YouTubers. All right, so if I watch you, you're likely one of my favorite YouTubers. I just discovered The One Janitor, and I just discovered that channel and watched a couple of videos, and so now I'm kind of feeling like I have, you know, some new new folks that I would like to um, some new folks that I'd like to recommend, but I don't I don't have a favorite because it's really, you know, about my mood. Although these days I'm kind of obsessed with Megan Tonges and Cat Black. Can you explain exactly what goes on at Altspace? For the most part, Altspace is designed to be a vegan friendly community space. It's mostly served as solidarity housing, mostly for young people who are coming from out of town, who are coming to Detroit to be part of either a conference or some kind of a social movement or a social gathering. I've had several groups of students from universities come and stay at the house. So the, the space really presents an opportunity for people who are visiting Detroit to have a deeper, richer experience when they're here than they would have if they were staying at a hotel or in a hostel in a kind of hipper part of town. There's also a vineyard that is part of a project called Grapeseed Detroit. Grapeseed Detroit is attempting to start a growers cooperative here on the east side of Detroit. It's primarily a project in sustainable living, so if you don't have a lot of money, how do you get access to alternative energy? How do you make your house as fuel efficient as possible? How do you get off the grid when you, you know, don't have a million dollars to invest in things like geothermal and other things like that. And then Matt Blender wants to know about my relationship with my husband, which is a long, complicated story, and that is gonna require an entirely different video on its own. Debbie Daniels asks, how long have you been involved in activism? Okay, so really since I became a theater of the oppressed practitioner, and that was around 
2008. Although as a theater artist, I've always been most interested in plays that engaged around social justice issues. And I think that just has to do with being, you know, a queer person and a person of color. Plays around gay themes, plays around African-American themes seem to focus on the social justice aspects of those identities. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. What is your favorite quote? It is probably a toss up between if you've come to help me stop wasting your time, but if you've come because your liberation is bound up with mine, we can work together, that quote, I'm, I'm bastardizing that quote, or the live simply so that others can simply live, and I think that's Gandhi. I think the first quote is Layla Watkins, who's an aboriginal, um, activist, and I think the second quote is Gandhi, but I'm not sure. I'll put the information in the description box below. How has your experience being a queer person shaped your worldview and your activism? As a queer person, I've always felt a little bit um, in danger and have always you know, sought to find safe spaces and still kind of tend to feel unsafe as a queer person, although I live pretty dangerously. <laughs> Anaí Núñez Acosta asks, who would you consider, if anybody, a good role model uh, or effective activist in terms of social justice on mainstream media? Hmm, this is an interesting question. I actually don't see any good role models for, you know, social justice activism in mainstream media. The closest, Please forgive me everyone, the closest is kind of Whoopi Goldberg on The View. Whoopi Goldberg was the first person who I heard say we should be focusing on the terrorism within our borders, the, the homegrown terrorist. Really just calling things out for what they are, even if she's not like 100% accurate all the time, but she's the only person who seems to be in a position to say the things that are kind of dangerous. So Whoopi Goldberg is the only person that I really see as any example of someone who is, is being, you know, being that kind of an activist. I definitely appreciate Democracy Now! and the platform that they give to other activists, but I wouldn't say that those activists are in the mainstream media. Mike on Raw, what around veganism do you feel positive about for 2017? It seems like we're finally moving away from the drama of last year. <laughs> uh, I feel like we're moving away from this whole, like, just being lost in drama and some of the other voices are beginning to prevail and I don't know, maybe it's just that I've been around longer and I'm starting to see more people and know more people, but I definitely feel like the conversations are going beyond just, you know, conversations about the animals and understanding that there are huge systems that we have to address that are causing not only the oppression of animals, but the oppression of human beings all over the planet and are screwing up the planet. So I love that we're able to talk about those things. I love that there are conversations about those things ongoing. And then what needs the most attention? I mean, I feel like, you know, some things that have happened recently have shown how far we have to go in terms of understanding where we've come from. Uh, and if there are people who really don't have a sense of where we've come from, then we're in big trouble. So I think we have to focus some attention on really helping people make connections between the past and all of the struggles that we've gone through to get where we are today so that we don't lose ground as we're trying to move forward on probably the most challenging social justice question that we face, and that is what we're gonna do about the non-humans. So those are all the questions. Thank you all so much. Of course, if you have a question and you wanna ask it, you can always, you know, drop something into the comments section. First of all, you know, it's you viewers that make this experience for me what it is. What happens in the comments section for me is probably half of the joy that I get from making these videos. That said, it is a lot of work and if you haven't taken a moment out to think about whether you'd like to support me on Patreon, please do, you know, give some thought to whether you would like to support me on Patreon. It really does make this a lot easier. Also, I wanna say thank you to Mod Vegan for shouting me out recently in her latest video on intersectionality. And I also wanna thank all of my fellow YouTubers who are part of an amazing community of folks having a 
amazing conversations all the time. If you didn't get a question in and you'd like to, you can always join me for my Sunday live stream on You Now. That's 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time every Sunday. I think we have a good time. Anyway, that's it for this video. Like it if you like it. Share, comment, subscribe. This is Reg signing off. Love yourself. Peace. And I love myself. The world is a ghetto, big guns and dinky